Um, I would say right off the bat that we need to get rid of the free kindergarten um, program. That's an easy one. We all had to pay before and it's not needs based. So I think we can get rid of it. Um, while it's great that the union negotiated a contract that guaranteed them a raise every year, the vast majority of us civilian taxpayers have not had an increase or a raise, yet we're being asked to underwrite the poor budgeting and mismanagement of school funds. I don't wanna cut any teacher positions or funding for academic programs whatsoever, but I do believe that these coordinator positions have got to go. When I was teaching in Easton, which spends far less per pupil, by the way, there were no coordinators. There were department heads who taught three classes instead of five per day, but those department heads did the coordinating and received a stipend on top of their salary, not a whole new position. Next, we need to examine these administrative positions more closely. I think there is some serious redundancy, especially in the virtue signaling department. What exactly does an assistant superintendent of equity and engagement do that a new DEI director doesn't? Why have we spent 70,000 on an outside consultant named Katie Novak who single-handedly ruined Barrington Public Schools by destroying their honors program? Lastly, we need to examine every single student who is not connected to a taxpaying resident and make some tough decisions. Yes, I'm touching the third rail, the METCO program. According to the Boston Globe article posted uh, in November 20 of 23, the METCO program reimburses $8,300 per pupil. We spend $19,350 per pupil. That's a balance of $11,000 per kid. Multiply that by the 62 METCO kids we had last year, and that's a shortfall of $685,000. So maybe I'm wrong that we're getting all of that money, but according to the Boston Globe, we're not. And somehow we needed an entire FTE to coordinate the program at a cost of $90,000. That is total insanity for another administrator. That's a high price for families who are living check to check and seniors on fixed incomes to have to subsidize in order to virtue signal that we're woke. And don't get me started on the non-citizens because I know there is no one okay. in this entire district who has backbone enough to push on our little- Ms. McLaughlin, you're, you're over time. I just want to say, I, I, I agree with a lot of what, uh, what Ms. That Ms. McLaughlin said, uh, especially regarding the administration redundancy, I think that's a, a point of contention. We clearly have a, a lot of challenges uh, in the school districts, as many others do. Uh, but like with my family and any family, we have to live within our means. And that results in prioritizing needs over wants. And I feel like too often this district doesn't do that. Um, this is an opportunity to correct that. And, and as a family, uh, we don't prioritize vacations over the mortgage. And as a district, we need to make we need to make sure that we're prioritizing the correct things. You know, it's 2024 and connectivity is more important than ever. So when I heard that the network administrator position, I'm assuming correctly that that's what this position is with the connectivity, the Wi-Fi, and everything, making sure that all of that runs smoothly within all the schools, um, was potentially one of the first items in the chopping block. I said there has to be somewhere else that we can cut, you know, to save what will continue to be, you know, a very important position moving forward. Uh, and I honestly think that the place to cut this first is is from DEI. A lot of people might disagree, but we should be removing all references to and positions dedicated to DEI. This would include the $70,000 a year coordinator position and all future training. These cuts would at least pay for the much needed network administrator position, more so than the DEI coordinator, and also potentially provide additional funds that can be reallocated to other needed resources or just cut given the amount of the budget that the district needs to trim. You know, I realize that this may be a drop in the bucket, but we have to start somewhere and we need to do a better job of prioritizing the actual needs of this district over the wants. And what, once we do that, we'll be on a path to a more balanced budget that actually addresses the needs of the district. Thank you. So I think we really do need to prioritize our teachers. We need to respect the time that they do give to our students. And, we, and part of that is we need to keep our classroom size small. And as we make these difficult decisions, keep the teachers and focus on where else can we make cuts, ask ourselves what positions are new to the district, which maybe didn't exist six years ago, you know, while, you know, the district kept on working. Uh, I do think we need to cut anyone involved in curriculum decisions. Anytime, which is being, we're paying people to cut honors classes. I think that we need to look at and maybe cut those positions. Um, I think also we need to start looking at student population. We do have new students. And as an immigrant, I really feel we need to emphasize uh, ESL for the new students we have staying at those hotels. But that does need to beg the question. With those new students, with the proposed uh, uh, redistricting for multifamily housing, 
we need to think of, do we need to be accepting students from out of district? Is that still sustainable? Thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, this is a difficult conversation, but it's a necessary one. Uh, I'm going to try to be um, respectful and productive in my comments, and you'll let me know how I do. Um, something we should be teaching our children is that um, successful people and successful organizations all have something in common, which is they look forward and not backwards. So uh, I have no desire to relitigate things of the past, but um, let's look forward together about how we can get to a more uh, balanced budget. So all of the top organizations where I've worked over my career uh, have a full and proper budget prioritization, usually yearly. And what that involves, uh, it's it's always done the same way. It's um, you list out what you consider um, essential positions and services, and you list out what you call non-essential. Now, before anyone takes offense at that term, non-essential employees, uh, I can I can um, soften the conversation a little bit by saying I'm a non-essential employee in my job. It doesn't mean it's not important. It just means if I didn't show up to work. The lights don't go off. Um, the plumbing doesn't go off. It means the the organization can run without without me there. Now, I like to think I add a lot of value to my job in this non-essential position, but it's not an essential position. And everyone who works in government knows what that term means. And there are very clear guidelines around like when essential employees have to show up to work and non-essential. It's a it's a mundane fact. But we need that breakdown, don't we, in order to do a full and proper prioritization and get to a balanced budget. Um, when I looked at this list, um, let me tell you a bit about what I saw. I saw cuts to things like math, uh, things to cuts like reading, <laughs> cuts to the LEAP program. This is a special education program. Uh, parents have told me that this program changed the lives of them and their children. Um, cuts to things like AP Bio. <laughs> uh, things that almost everybody takes who's on a college track, who needs these courses to get into college. So my question is, do those sound like non-essential teaching positions to you? Uh, they don't to me. They seem more essential. And I get that sometimes you can reduce teacher positions and increase class size and things like that. But the fundamentals of these areas where we would make cuts based on this proposal sounded essential to me. Didn't they sound that way to you? Um, and then what we didn't see was a full list and accounting of those non-essential positions. Those tend to be more administrative in nature. Um, those positions, I think, need to be part of this accounting. I actually really appreciated that detailed breakdown of impact of um, all these different types of positions. I think that adds a great value. But we need that for the non-essential positions, too, um, so that we can start ranking these things and com committee members can weigh in. Um, I, I, I don't um, I, I also don't think it would be appropriate in the spirit of a full and proper proper prioritization to start taking things off the table based on personal preferences. Um, you know, I would want positions that I personally value that are non-essential that I think maybe the benefits greatly outweigh the cost to just be included. Um, and maybe you can make a case for those. But, um, you know, we we have had new administrator positions. Some of these are very, very expensive. Some of these we've done fine in past years without them. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the specifics of what they are, but I think those should all be put on the table and discussed. Um, and um, I don't know how you can say these positions are not essential or that just take them off the table with no discussion. Say, don't touch that one. I like that one. I think it should all be included. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking forward to seeing in the next week is a full and proper budget prioritization in that spirit. Um, one more note before I uh, log off. Um, I think there is a tremendous symbolic value to administrative cuts in addition to the cost. I think it speaks a lot when the CEO takes a salary cut, when the CEO cuts the CEO's personal assistant. Um, you know, maybe these aren't the the magic bullet that solves the budget problem, but they show solidarity with the teachers who are getting um, laid off or reduced, and they show integrity and leadership. So that's another value. We need to spread the pain around, and we need to all be in this together. Um, so thank you for my allowing my comments. Hey, I'll be quick. I uh, I wanted to express my disappointment and frustration at the school committee's ludicrous budgetary proposal. 
It seems to be a reoccurring theme here. Uh, clarification. Obviously. The school committee hasn't made a budget proposal yet. Just a clarification. Administration has. Go ahead. This this comes down to your inability to prioritize requirements. Failing to distinguish between a need to have and a nice to have. It's a very basic financial skill. Uh, I was curious if you honestly propose if this, or if you think that this would go over well. And if you did, it's obvious just how out of touch you really are. I yield my time. Hi, I just want to say that um, several years ago, I advocated for FLESS, the language program. Language is the gateway to diversity. That was $65,000. And yet we went from FLESS in the elementary schools three days a week to just one day a week. We keep taking away from our families. If we're interested in diversity, equity, and inclusion, let's focus on providing our children with the resources to learn languages so that they can bridge the gap between cultures. Also, I'm aware that the DI positions, they're not to help the families who experience diversity issues in the, in the schools. They're really to buffer the schools from liability. And a lot of families don't understand that. They think that the intention of those positions are to help families and they are not. They just help the district. It makes me also wonder about the liability expense that we're not seeing, that I did not see in the budget. How much are we sp spending on attorneys? Because I am aware that attorneys are being hired for a lot of things. So um, I'm a little shocked uh, to see this presentation of cutting 21 teachers and not a single administrator. I was so relieved last time when this committee uh, said that saving teachers jobs and keeping class sizes low was the top priority. And then the proposed budget, in fact, the first balanced budget we've seen all budget cycle basically puts them first on the chopping block. I understand that curriculum coordinators are wonderful luxury to have. They really do propose wonderful programs. They even out how we use the curriculum, but, uh, I have to say that a bunch of third graders will have a much, much more consistent experience if they don't have 26 classmates bouncing off the walls. So as you know, and this is actually what I'm seeing is that nobody wants to actually propose an actual cut. So it was very brave of Dr. Patello to actually start putting, you know, positions on the list. And what I'm really hoping to hear the same from this committee is you're gonna to have to make tough choices. It's time to make tough proposals and to take the responsibility for making those tough proposals and not leave it all on the administration. Uh, this should be a collaborative process. Usually it starts in December, so there's a lot more time for this back and forth, but there isn't. And what I would really hope to see from you is some specifics. Now, I wanna discuss the fees. I'm really glad that it was brought up in, spe in specific. And one thing I've, find very confusing is why the first sport has the highest fee where you're paying almost $400 for the first sport. And then it goes less and less, you're paying half as much for the third sport. Now it makes sense in a private state gymnastics facility where they're making a profit on every single class you take just less and less. But since the school is actually losing more and more money with every single sport that a student takes, I think it, first of all, it's more equitable to make that first sport as cheap as possible so that as many students as possible can participate. And I have to say, I have a big family. For me, it would be much more meaningful if that first sport is inexpensive. And then instead of you know worrying about that 1200 family cap, I could say, all right, at least every single one of my children could afford one sport. And then once again, since the school is losing money on every single sport, this might be a way to basically be a win-win for large families and for the school budget as a whole. So that's kind of one specific proposal I would like to make. I What I really hope though is to see specific proposals from committee members saying, all right, this is a program I love, but I'm willing to sacrifice. Thank you. But I wanted to talk about a couple things. Um, I wanted to talk about, first of all, this curriculum coordinator department head thing. You know, I've worked at a lot of different places. I've worked in schools for the last eight years. There's actually fairly negligible difference from the teacher perspective about if you have a curriculum coordinator or a stipended department head. 
Okay, you know what you have to do. You have to teach to an MCAS. You have state standards to align to. You have a curriculum that's being assigned. You're being evaluated by a building administrator. You're being evaluated by your department head. To have a curriculum coordinator, I consider that to be a massive luxury. It's great if you have one, but I'll tell you this. If you, go, when, if you went to all the kids in town and you said, okay, we can cut AP Psych, which is the most accessible AP to um, underperforming students and students who were brought up underprivileged, we can cut instrumental music, cut chorus, cut um, visual art, or we can make sure that the curriculum is completely perfectly aligned. Think about this. What are the kids going to want? What are the kids going to need? Okay, I want to speak on behalf of these kids. You know, it's it's no secret to a lot of people in this uh, meeting that it's my life dream to one day serve this district and work here. And when I hear things like this, it just makes me feel like the district considers teachers to be a flip commodity to say, oh, well, you know, who needs music? Who needs art? Who needs social studies? You know, who needs uh, foreign language? You know, we can shrink a whole team at the middle school. You know, a kid's going to get a much more valuable experience from being in a smaller class for having a teacher who's not as totally flustered than they would get from having, you know, two assistant superintendents to having, you know, a curriculum coordinator overseeing horizontal alignment. It's tough choices, but, you know, that's just my perspective as an educator. The other thing I was going to say is just a proposal for you guys to think about. You know, I think that George Ann made a good point about full day K and about bringing back students from um you know from outplacement um my th i went to star camp as a kid that wasn't cheap you know i know that's community education which is somehow some sort of an offshoot of the schools but if we really need to start talking about recouping money okay maybe dig into that budget star camp and create camp and pull that back over to the schools or raise the rates for that um you know there's a lot of different ways that you can do this and i just think getting rid of teachers and getting rid of AP classes and just, you know, all this other stuff that was talked about that, that was just kind of shocking for me. Um, and, you know, I'm someone I've been, you know, I've, I've been to different school districts, you know, I've been to this one and I, um, and I just value the teachers in this, in this district so much that the idea of letting them go over, you know, over admin or over, you know, any of these other ideas just seems to be absurd to me. Um, but I thank you guys for giving me a little bit of time and I hope you all have a lovely night. I just wanted to echo what um, John said as well um, and disagree with Judge Judy about the curriculum coordinator part because all, especially teachers, modern teachers, all have to go through a master's degree program. And so it is a very intensive course of study where we go through curriculum frameworks. There is a tremendous amount of uh, responsibility that teachers now have to take in their classrooms. And again, like I said, in, in uh, when I was at Franklin, where I did my student teaching, where I ended my career in Easton, we had department heads who served as those curriculum coordinators with a reduced class level and a stipend. And they were able to coordinate each department so that we were all in line pacing wise, curriculum wise, mass frameworks wise, all of our kids that were on IEPs were being serviced. Like we had that oversight with our own and they connected to the principals. They, you know, orchestrated the observations. It was very, very professional and very well done and tight. And so that is something that I think that we, we could replicate. I think that that's a creative idea that we should definitely uh, traverse. I also am upset by the fact that SROs aren't even on the table. We still have one school resource officer for the entire school. That's not even part of the budget. Um, so if you're talking about these draconian cuts, which I think are highly offensive and totally out of touch with what everybody in the community um, has, has expressed, I think that you're gonna raise class sizes. And guess what? That's gonna increase discipline issues, which is gonna need school resource officers. And so people who are uh, honking on about all of the hate and anti-Semitism and whatnot in school also have to uh, you know, take responsibility for the fact that you're setting these kids up for failure if there's not the discipline structure in place to be able to address these inevitable issues that are gonna come up. And lastly, um, the the kindergarten class, I, again, I think that that is something that um, is an easy cut to make. Um, so again, uh, let's let's get creative with what we can do and let's put these administrators like, come on, 
seriously, like almost 200 grand for an equity and, 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 and engagement position. Like think about the teachers that you could actually subsidize if that position weren't in place. Because again, it's a redundant position. Uh, no offense to uh, the person that's in that position. So that's all I got. Have a good night.